So what we've learned so far is that Dell has actually gotten worse with time. That's impressive. Sometimes the news is sad, and so we wanted to cheer everyone up by checking on the progress of the human race by looking at two Dell computers. One of them is from approximately 2007 to 2008, and one of them is from a couple weeks ago, where, well, it's the Dell G5 5000. So we're gonna be looking at these. This is the Vostro 400. It's even got the original peel film on the side panels. That's right, and the original dust from its last use. We're gonna be taking these apart and seeing if Dell was at one time better. Uh, and be, given that this is 2007, 2008, it's not even that long ago in Dell's history. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. We use Squarespace for our own GN store and juggle complex multi-piece orders all the time with it. Squarespace makes it fast for us to roll out new products with detailed pages full of galleries, videos, and descriptors. It's also useful for your own resume sites, for photographer or project portfolios, or for starting your new small business idea. There's never been a better time to try and start your new business than right now. And we can vouch that Squarespace makes it easy. Visit squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So as a quick reminder, if you had forgotten, the Dell G5 5000 that we reviewed not long ago, barring the bloatware, software, BIOS, packaging, and uh, instructional materials not being that great, the Dell G5 5000 also had just one other flaw, which is all of the components in the box. The computer, in other words. So given that this computer was so problematic, we did want to go back in time and look at uh, the Vostro 400. The Vostro 400 shipped optionally with Windows Vista at one point, although this one has a Windows XP professional key on it. So it was actually the upgraded model versus Vista, but that's another time for another day. Uh, internally, we don't know yet what components it has, or at least I don't. We're going to open that up and find it out today. The G5 5000, one of the bigger complaints we had with this and with the Alienware system that was $1,800, was that both used basically the same cooler, which is a garbage, not even Intel stock cooler, an aluminum chunk with a hockey puck protruding out the bottom of it to contact AMD CPUs, Intel CPUs, you name it, they can make it fit. Doesn't mean it's good, but it's cheap and it'll fit. I wanna see if that's in here. That's what I'm curious, because it looks like it should be from in here. In fact, that cooler looks like it should be from in a computer from the 1990s, if not sooner. So we're going to be looking for that. Uh, chassis design is something we're curious about as well, because with something like the G5 5000, you can see that they are trying to get as much mileage as... I forgot that these screws are captive. That's probably the best feature out of this entire thing. Uh, and there's a separate review on this, if you're curious about it. But Internally, you can just tell that this is a case of trying to maintain old tooling. Not, not, I mean, it's also a case, but it's an instance of trying to maintain old tooling with as little forward changes as possible so that they're able to keep the pricing down. And that's also part of why you end up with these proprietary components, like the motherboard will cut away to other shots of where it just ends up in a landfill when you're done with it. Because what the motherboard does in this is it allows Dell to put all of the I.O. up here without using a separate PCB for the case, because that would require effort and a couple of dollars maybe. And we don't want to just give that away for the $900 you pay for this piece of trash. But uh, they basically, they attach all this to the board and it makes everything unusable. That was our big problem with the Dell G5 5000. Not going to go back over the whole thing again today, but we'll keep it out just for the comparison. So that was our biggest problem with the newer system is that all this proprietary stuff, you know, Dell, there's actually a quote from them back not too long ago where Dell was talking about how it was trying to move away from proprietary parts and towards standardized parts that, you know, you can use in things in the future and that can be replaced with things from other things, not just the Dell system that has a specific motherboard made for a specific year that's then discontinued. Because as we said previously, the answer for where you can get a proprietary board replacement for a weird form factor is uh, go fuck yourself and buy a new computer. But has that changed? Was it always that way? Well, it's not going to take long to find out. There's not thumb screws on this. Uh, that's not necessarily a downgrade, but it does show that the times have changed there. Ready? Oh wait, did you did I did you see this? Has anyone ever done uh, like a film peel shot with film that's been on a system for something like 13 years? 
because it's kind of crusty and this is not really that flexible anymore, so we're going to leave it on there. I'd rather not distribute it into the atmosphere. <laughs> All right, there we go. So the first thing I noticed is that I can't tell the difference between... If, if this computer were put in front of me like this without any markings, with no one prompting me as to what it is, I, I would actually not be sure if this is a brand new out-of-box Dell or HP system uh, because they both have timeless designs, as we said in the HP review. That component set could be from any decade uh, except for this one, and this is when we bought it. I wouldn't be able to tell you when this comes from. What I can tell you is that uh, the motherboard is a standard form factor. That looks like micro ATX. It's very well defined. You could find replacements for this. In fact, you could put replacements in this very case from a different brand if you wanted to. So the reason this stuff is important, not just e-waste. If you don't care about e-waste, you don't really think it's a big deal that we're uh, dumping computers and gold components and aluminum and copper and completely reusable metals onto the top of a landfill because they're made as cheap as possible, that's fine. If, you, if none of that bothers you, uh, I agree our, uh, our descendants will be able to harvest all of that material from the landfills. It'll make their lives easier instead of digging it out of the earth. So there's, a, there's an argument there. And it's a post-apocalyptic one, but there is an argument. If you don't care about that stuff, you should still at least care about your cost, the economics of it, where this computer, unlike this $900 computer from 2021, this one from 2008, 7-ish, you would be able to replace that motherboard with something else in that case. Or you'd be able to pull all this stuff so far, at least. We'll see on the power supply sizing. But you'd be able to pull this stuff out, put it in another case. So you can keep the stuff going. And even if you're not going to keep it alive, use it in the future, it makes it so that this system can be given to someone else through an organization, for example, like the Cramden Institute that we've worked with in the past. So what we've learned so far is that Dell has actually gotten worse with time. That's impressive. Maybe not. I don't know. They're pretty bad, so I guess there wasn't much upward room. But uh, it's, I think it's impressive. We're going to look at the rest of this. Let's do our standard teardown. So far, I mean, I hate the front panel. Um, and that's just because there's no airflow as always, but that's something I've been complaining about for a very long time at this point, so not, not surprising. Front panel's not great. The chassis is standard, at least for the era. The chassis has not really, if we look at the HP system and the Dell system next to me, the other one, you'll see that the chassis structure has not really changed much other than uh, the presence of more hard drive cages because now we've moved on to SSDs. But we're going to take a closer look at this. So while we were readjusting the shot, I was talking with Andrew about how I said, actually, I'm not, I'm not sure if it is 2008. Um, and uh, we saw this stamp in here. It says 2008, March 6th, I think that says from here. And Andrew said, did you think it was newer or older? And I realized Dell maybe hasn't changed that much because I thought it was older than this. <laughs> I thought maybe this was more of a 2002 or three, But... Uh, it's still better than the G5 5000, which is, you know, Dell, now I'm not even comparing you to your competitors, which is actually how the comparisons should be made. I'm comparing you to your past self, and this isn't an instance of, like, Dell living in its own shadow because this is not Colossus. So uh, it's, you know, it's kind of hard at this point for Dell to complain about anything we're saying since this is just them demonstrating a regression in quality standards as they've grown as a company. So that's very unfortunate. But so far, things are pretty standard for how most computers are built because these are all standardized components. I'm not sure what specific card this is. I know that they sold these with 8800s. I don't think this is an 8800. I know some of them had a 512 megabyte 8800 GT models. This, uh, this isn't it. But we could open it up, I guess. It's not that important fact of the matter is that the motherboard's replaced. Well, what I really want to see, though, is the cooler at this point. Wow, this is actually, like, the same. The fan? I don't know. They're using a Sunon fan now. This is a better fan than the one that's in here, I think. Is it held in with screws? Wow. Look. They used screws to hold the fan in from 2008. You know what they used in this one? You use your imagination and tell me what, what you think that looks like. But that's what they used to hold this one in. Keep the comments clean. I don't, I don't want to get filtered out by YouTube. 
Okay. Um, so the power supply is this standard. That's an ATX 20 or 24 pin. So it's a 24 pin. Uh, we've got standard SATA. We have, that wasn't even, can I, okay. Well, we've got a PCIe 6 pin. Is there an EPS 12 volt? There is. There's a 4 pin EPS 12 volt header in here. This is a standard power supply. Dell had a previous uh, period in its life where it was making power supplies that were a, a little bit um, less than non-flammable. But uh, their newer stuff, the power supply in this thing, for as much as we've mocked this, the one good component in here is the power supply. Unfortunately, it's not standardized. So that's still PCIe, that's normal. The motherboard connector, however, is absent. There's no 20, no 24 pin. There's not a 10 pin uh, ATX 12VO header either. Instead, they use this weird six pin down here. And then they're doing all of the voltage conversion on the board for the five volt and the 3.3 volt. So it's all 12 volts. Uh, and it's stepping through the motherboard to get that conversion. It's not a standard power supply. It's not TFX. It's special. It's a couple of millimeters off of TFX. So they really made sure uh, it can't be used anywhere else. But it comes from their server division, from what we understand. So when we tested this power supply in our power supply testing setup with Patrick Stone hosting a lot of that, it actually did pretty well. We haven't tested this old power supply. I don't think we will. It might be interesting. The system was used for a while, and the power supply is aged, so that might be fun. But it is, in fact, a standard power supply, so you would be able to replace it with another power supply. What a novel concept. The customer being able to keep your product alive instead of buying another one from you. Let's take the cooler off. Actually, let's try and take the board out first. I want to see if this is a load-bearing CPU cooler or not, because that's what they used in the G5. Load-bearing. I'd never seen that before where it was mounted to the case. If you want to work on a PC building surface like I'm using, our anti-static mod mats are now in stock and shipping. We've been waiting to get them in for months. They're finally here. If you want one, you should buy it soon because they're selling through quickly. This is the Volt model. We have cable pinouts like Ethernet wiring diagrams, RGB diagrams. Certainly won't need that for this computer. Molex, we might need that one for this computer. And screw tracking grids, among other things. So you can check that out on store.gamersnexus.net. If you'd like to get a high-quality anti-static mod mat for protecting your table and the system that you're building uh, while also supporting us. Still, I think my, just as a fun trivia while I'm unscrewing the rest of these, I think my favorite quote relating to Dell, that's a, that's a category everyone should have in their quotes list, is when Intel said as a surfaced, I think, through discovery in a legal case, quote, Dell is the best friend that money can buy. <laughs> They've got a long and storied history. Oh, wow. Did it move? Oh, my gosh. There's no glue. There's no tape. No adhesive of any kind holding the rear I.O. to the back of the case. We've seen that. Uh, and, in fact, the CPU cooler is not load-bearing. This is actually one of the best built, pre-built, we've seen from an OEM in the last year. Um, and in the last year, we've only reviewed components uh, pre-built from 2021. So that's nice. <laughs> All right, so let's try and get something to take away here. Uh, CPU core I'm interested in. Now that we know that it's not load-bearing, we know that the case is somewhat standardized. Look at that. Okay, cool. This is actually not, you know, Dell, guys, man, I'm so disappointed. Not because the, this one's, I'm disappointed because of the severe regression there is to the modern $900 computer we looked at. Look at that. That's a pretty good spread pattern. Like, this is a fairly substantial aluminum heat sink, depending on what CPU is in there. It may, may be in the good enough camp. And this is basically what they have mounted to that one right there except there's a bit more of a shroud with the fan. The fan orientation is very similar. Let's measure the size where they've got it at that slight angle. The fin density. I guess the one underneath the G5 5000 is a more of a floral design. Uh, where it's a, they're both downdraft coolers, but that one's got the downdraft flower stylus, typically what the companies call it. 
and this one is more square. The fan is, that's an 80 mil fan. 80, both 80 mil fans. So that hasn't changed. The, there's, there's, I, there might not be more surface area here because that floral design does some tricky stuff towards the outer edges of it. So there might not be more surface area. It is a taller fin stack. It's kind of a wash at the end of the day, but they haven't changed that much. I guess that's the point. For now though, let's get back to the thermal paste pattern. So that's good spread. There's good mounting pressure there. They uh, had a, a good uh, thermal paste application. It's probably done by machine. And we're really not missing any coverage. Whereas a lot of the other stuff we've looked at, there's missing corners, there's missing edges of the CPU coverage. But this one, we can see it pretty much contacts the whole thing. So that's good. Actually not short CPUs on there. We'll clean that off. Q6600, that's a good CPU. That's a quad core, Q6600. I had that in one of my personal builds. It actually was a really good CPU for its time. That's cool. So they've got these pads here. This is a, a unique thing on the motherboard. These might just be stick on. They could have manufactured it with them as well as an assembled it with them. But that's just to, uh, to retain the back plate although it's probably glued on there as well, knowing these companies, uh, but also to provide a bit of a buffer when torquing everything down. So anyway, that's not bad. It's, you know, they've chosen a good CPU. What would they pair for a RAM? They used all four slots. Uh, this is a one gigabyte Alpida stick. They're not really around too much these days, but uh, PC to 6400 uh, for the spec. There's four of them and I mean, that's kind of all there is to it. It's four gigabytes. But they did, uh, Dell populated all the, all the memory slots. And uh, paired that with a 6600. So I mean, that's a, it's not a bad system really. I think four gigabytes what I had with mine. Maybe it was eight. I think it was four for a while. VRM, I'm not sure the quality. There's not many markings on these components. Some of them have markings, but it's not worth trying to dig up data sheets from 2008. Uh, it still works today as far as I know. I don't see any like scorch marks or anything. So we're not gonna look up the VRM. The chipset, well, okay. This is back in the bridge days. Northbridge and Southbridge, they've both got their own heat sinks. They're fairly substantial pieces of probably aluminum. Let's see. Yeah, all right, aluminum. Which is better than some of the OEM systems now where they'll skip the chipset heat sink. It's not fully necessary, but it is kind of like, you know, why would you do that? Just to give you an idea of the age for the system. There you go. Kind of like Dell's modern performance on the G5 5000. I mean, it's a standard motherboard. There's not much else to say than that. That's good job, Dell. Could we, if we could do it again, that'd be great. I mean, I don't really know like what to say. Everything's standard. I don't really have, the complaints I would have had back then would be related to maybe the component pairing, maybe the price, the value. I probably wouldn't have complained as much as I should have about the front panel back then. Uh, but if we're reviewing it today, that would be a main point of concern for us. But I, it doesn't look like I'd be crying about proprietary parts. They've routed the cables. This is cable managed. Not bad. They still do that today, but cable management wasn't much of a thing um, for the DIY market at that time. The Antec 900, as great of a case as it was, was really a nightmare for cable management by today's standards. All right, so there's your power supply. I would ask Patrick Stone to look at this, but he'd get far too interested in it. And, uh, and since this is so old, it'd be hard to dig up a lot of the data, but uh, light on is the manufacturer. Dell still uses light on as its supplier. The one that I was just talking about, the G5, that's a light on power supply from the server division. DC output, 350 watts. Uh, it is multi rail. I mean, obviously, you could see that by looking at this. You know that there's multiple voltages on this. 18 amps max on one of the 12 volts here, 12 amps max on the other, 17 on the 3.3. Maximum continuous combined output power uh, for 12 volts is 300 watts. So there's a bit of a limiter there. But the cool thing is this is 
ATX. Let's go ahead and prove that. Here's a Cooler Master, $55 modern power supply, 650 watts. Pretty good. Uh, we just tested it, and they're more or less the same size. There's some uh, size deviation built into ATX. Actually, these are almost exactly the same size. So, you know, if, if you wanted to keep this system alive and the power supply died, you wouldn't need to buy a Dell one from this era, a light-on one from this era. You could buy whatever. And that's the magic of a computer. When it's a desktop and it has space for standards, uh, you can keep the stuff alive, reduce waste, reduce waste of money as well. That's all we want to see here, Dell. Dell makes, you know, talks big game about all these initiatives, environmental initiatives, whatever else, and yeah, they're doing proprietary parts in their modern stuff. It's obviously they're uh, they're full of it. Oh, so, I mean, yeah, good job, Dell. I, I wish this were a computer from today, but uh, it's actually a good job nonetheless. There's only one fan in here. The biggest problem with this computer that we would have had, and it would have shown up in thermal testing, is not only the airflow, but there's no fan in the front. There's no actual, there's no way for air to enter <laughs> this computer. That's the biggest problem. So you're relying on negative pressure to pull a very tiny amount of air in right here. But if we get a shot of the inside of the case, you'll see the, the porosity of that, as it were, of the, I've got PCIe things falling everywhere. <laughs> Uh, actually, that's a point, too. They did use standard PCIe slot covers. So the porosity of the, the internal chassis panel, as mated with the plastic panel, is not great, but it's going to pull air in through here to some extent just by natural uh, negative pressure setup. And you know, you've got your pull from this fan and from the power supply to some extent as well. So thermals would not be great. The configuration for airflow is pretty bad. But the components are something that, you know, at the time, if we, re if we reviewed this today, what we would tell you is, um, let's just pretend the component choice all made sense for modern components. If it did, what we'd be able to say is, the component selection is not bad, and we'd be able to say it's standard. So if the airflow sucks and the thermals are bad and you want to change the case, you can pull all of them out and rebuild the computer in a different case, and you still get the parts. So, you know, Dell, that's, that's all I'm trying to say. This whole time. That's all my argument has been. Uh, I, I hate to pull out the Vostro 400 and prove the point, but hopefully this shows that Dell wasn't always making things like the G5 and the whatever the Alienware R10 was that we reviewed, and that um, at some point, either out of trying to make a good product or because there wasn't a lazier way to do it at the time, Dell was making something that was at least somewhat standardized. So that's it for this teardown. Perhaps point proven. Let us know what you think. Leave comments down below as always. Subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to grab one of our mod mats like I worked on today or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly and get behind the scenes videos and check out our pre-built review playlist. Links in the description below if you'd like to see modern computers go up against our testing standards. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.